So we're definitely getting ahead of ourselves talking about anything COD 2023 related, but when it comes to what's upcoming this fall, one of the big questions that I've had myself is how will it be different? How will it justify, if it can at all, another premium price tag as a full release would? One of the ways that they're seemingly trying to attempt to do this might be just a fundamental shift in content offering that honestly could go forward and become a staple in the franchise going into the future. So today, we're discussing a recent report and the implications that it has for COD 2023 and even beyond. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. Are you hoping to see anything in particular with COD 2023? What would your ideal offering be for this upcoming title? And if you enjoy the video, you find it at on Insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Finally, as per usual, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for the best blue light glasses on the market but let's take a look at what COD 2023 and perhaps beyond holds. So a lot has been said recently about COD 2023, COD 2024 and all. Some of it credible, some just rumors that sound too good to be true. But one recent report, which we focused on a few other details in that previously came from Jason Schreier of Bloomberg, whose track record for all things reporting, not just Call of Duty related, but industry wide is actually quite remarkable. At the very least, because of that, I'm inclined to hear it out for what's been reported. But in an article discussing 2023 and the uncertain fate of the project, stuck between the mention of Activision one the game to feel new, but be an extension of the given Modern Warfare 2 universe, and the mention that Sledgehammer is kind of worried that the lessened developmental window may impact the product, though not necessarily as worried as it would seem as they were with Vanguard when that was primarily their project. Now everyone is working on this upcoming one, but tucked in between those details was the strange mention and just in passing mention that the current plan is for the game to carry over maps and modes from last year's shooter, that being this year's Modern Warfare 2. Now I touched on that particular part in a smaller discussion but recently, even more hints have turned towards this now, including things like weapons and presumably weapon skins by association. And if we're seeing all of that happen, it's not too far of a stretch or a leap to consider that maybe even operators will be as well. Essentially, all of what we have right now may not be necessarily lost come this fall for a year or two on an air quote different game. And that's where the monumental shift, if we can call it that, comes into play and where this may set the precedent going forward being an entirely different experience. So firstly, I mean, this would be a combined experience, but new if everything were to go according to how is planned in those reports. Not losing anything, but making a day one offering pretty bolstered out. I mean, normally the last couple of years we've had like this discussion on launch day, there's only going to be X amount of maps, X amount of weapons, X amount of modes, whatever the case. And there's been more of each of those different categories in different games. But I mean, if we end up having whatever we have for 2023, plus what we have as of this game right now, not saying it's good or bad, but quantifiably, it is more than what we'd see on a launch day. But with it being described as a remaster, but not with remastered maps, weapons, and all from Modern Warfare 2 2009, but like a new campaign and some additional new content as well, maps and weapons presumably as well, to what degree, that's a question mark. It will definitely be a weird day one offering because some of it will be new, some of it not so much, but again, quantifiable numbers seemingly could be some of the largest we have ever seen in COD history. Again, not saying that's good or bad, but just statistically speaking, those numbers will be bolstered and an experience that feels new, but also familiar at the same time. How much of it will be truly new? That's a question that we just don't have an answer to yet, because if it's Modern Warfare 2 maps from what we have this year, plus Modern Warfare 2 remastered maps, plus Modern Warfare 2 weapons and Modern Warfare 2 remastered weapons, operators from this past game, how many weapons and operators and things like that and maps will be new for in air quote, Modern Warfare 3. But while an offering may be bigger on air quote day one, even though it may be like day 366 at that point, the biggest thing to me though, is the fact that this can take what we have right now and change the gameplay feel. If it's a new game, it'll be its own application, meaning that you can buy to play whatever COD 2023 may be and what that has on offer, and the continuation of content is seemingly optional, not required. That'd be a whole other PR crisis that would happen if you needed to have Modern Warfare 2 to play COD 2023. I don't think that would happen, but being its own separate thing, that would indicate that issues players have with the game could be ironed out should Sledgehammer choose to do so with the content from the current game ported into Modern Warfare 3, not the other way around. And that I think is what I'm the most hopeful for truthfully out of COD 2023 in total. Fixing things like perhaps Dead Silence or something like Ninja as a perk. Perhaps Ninja with Dead Silence, dampening footsteps by default, but completely silent with the field upgrade or Dead Silence as a perk and like an awareness 
awareness style field upgrades or something similar like that. Red dots coming back on the minimap perhaps, spawns not being a quadrant based squad spawn system, and any number of things you could think of. And just for my own sake, the kill streak counter with each kill on your HUD. Why they take that away from the beta, I don't think that I'll ever understand the point of that one. But the point being to this sort of semi tangent is that what we see in the game right now could very well be changed. Movement, dead silence and perks, weaponry, all that kind of stuff, all could end up changing because it'd be its own application for Sledgehammer to develop. They've done that before. Vanguard included some of those things that we already talked about. So who's to say that doesn't happen again? And so therefore, maybe a little bit more optimistic of a viewpoint of what Modern Warfare 2 should have been perhaps to a lot of people. But that said, this then now has the potential to change the years ahead whenever we look at this on a much larger scale. Obviously, what we have right now, for whatever reason, Modern Warfare 2 is not going to seemingly have two years of developed content by Infinity Ward. Sledgehammer and whoever is helping out on development, seemingly doing that year two offering that bolsters out as a year two or its own separate thing, however they want to market it. But that initial plan of Infinity Ward supporting the game for two years is something that may have been the plan initially, but doesn't seem to happen. However, very much so still could apply to COD 2024 and beyond. But if it doesn't, that also is possible that we could see this happen again in 2025, where our main titles of Modern Warfare and Black Ops games are supported in theme for two years with extensions each per year, carrying on that year one content into a secondary application or just bolstering out the overall offering, which that, while artificially, still does in theory continue the theme of items having more value than in the past. Year over year, they're irrelevant after that 365 days of support, but if this is the case, that changes then to at least two years. So while Warzone was our first introduction into this, and whether or not it was the big picture thing that it was always planned like this, we've seen it happen and we know that it's possible, especially now with everything on a unified modern warfare engine going forward. I mean, we're going to see the same basic building blocks. Again, those building blocks, though, not necessarily affecting things like movement, mini map pings, perk selection, and all that kind of stuff and how those fundamentals work. But the engine itself, underlying tech, that's the same here for COD 2023, COD 2024, COD 2023. 25 and so on. So it is something that we have the ability to see these ports happen much easier than going from Black Ops Cold War to Modern Warfare 2019's engine with that Black Ops Cold War weaponry into Warzone and so on. So with that said, I think that that part in particular is personally pretty nice. It offers more value to grind out those mastery camos year over year, those limited time items that may be seasonal or like a gunfight tournament reward or something like that, because they won't be gone and forgotten in just a few months time after you earn them. Instead, you'll have an entire another year with that and however long Warzone is supported beyond, if that's something that you're interested in. Now, my only concern with all of this is how in the world do you justify a $70 price tag? And that is a very large and very valid concern because truthfully, what we hear right now, I'm not happy with the $70 price tag. If we're looking at it, we already saw the campaign remastered for Modern Warfare 2. That went for $20 back in 2020. So, I mean, when you consider that, I'd say that generously, that and Spec Ops made up 60% of the game. You could do an even split perhaps of the three modes, campaign, multiplayer, Spec Ops. But honestly, I think multiplayer has a bit more weight behind it. So like, I would say, maybe you sell COD 2023 for $40, a new campaign, plus the multiplayer experience, plus some new stuff thrown in there. But for $70, that's a major stretch based off of what we know now, which sure might not be the whole picture, but right now, that's the preliminary assumption. $70 is just, as that's too much, man. So how in the world do you make it worth it? That's the only concern that I have here if we do make 2022 go into 2023. So with that, that's where I'm going to leave you. Just wanted to kind of casually discuss this here because we never really went in depth on this. And it's a fascinating thing from a tech side. But again, in terms of value, in terms of how you end up making it something that rivals that of a full on launch, but being a similar experience, that's the tough part. So that said, let me know your thoughts down below. Would you guys like to see all of Modern Warfare 2's content carry over into this upcoming fall's air quotes new game, or would you like something entirely different? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, you found it all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay the day with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD related. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.